Hey guys, so after I made that video about the game stores closing, I actually still have a retail store. And the retail store doesn't sell magic, but it definitely is buying magic at the time. So in case you have an interesting collection, uh, let me know, because I'm interested. And I'm, I have the cash assets to cash you out. So back to my retail store, I thought my lease was up in April, end of April, but turns out my lease is actually ending in March. So we renewed in October, it was a six month lease. I, for some reason I thought we renewed in November. And yeah, um, I got an email from my landlord saying, hey, you know, you still haven't renewed. It's 1100, 1100 a month is not bad. When I had my downtown office in Houston, it was 4,800 a month with a one year contract. Uh, this contract is much less. And basically I shot an offer of, hey, you know, given the situation, I want a lease for six months for $800. And they said, no. Uh, therefore I am not going to, uh, there's no point in having a storefront when every store is closed, right? And it just, uh, no, I got lucky in a very, you know, when I sold my stocks, it was pretty lucky. Because um, I didn't really know what was going to happen. I just sold my stocks because I wanted to take money from my employees to put an escrow to ensure that they know that they have enough money for, at least we have enough money for the whole year to pay them. We had the overhead covered as a way to encourage my employees to work a little harder, not because I actually was afraid of the virus at the time, which I thought was not as serious as it later and today it is today so in terms of stores going out of business um, i think now is the time um, when you're paying rent and employees and overhead and electricity and water and these bills that you know hit you every single month these monthly bills um it's rough like when I mean it's rough, I mean, wow, it is really, really something bad. And the reason that it's so bad is when you're not making, so you're, you're buying a storefront because you want customers to come in. And whenever you buy a storefront, they always say location, location, location. And the better, the more, the better the location, the more money that you would supposedly pay for said location. And no, that's very logical. That's very... I mean, I think everyone can kind of understand why that would be the case. Uh, the thing that I want to mention now is that game stores are, they don't really have, they don't really have much wiggle room. There's not like a, a huge amount of profit in a game store. And even, and even in the best economy, game stores are not, able to break even most game stores start to lose money so when you talk about a really bad economy what does that look like what does that feel like i don't know i i imagine that the scenario is much much worse than when the economy is good because at least if you can't break even when the economy is good, then there's really no hope you can break even when the economy is bad, right? It's one of these scenarios where you're kind of doomed. And that's where I feel local game stores currently are at. Um, I don't think that they will do well in the future, in this recession. I don't think anyone would do well. Any retail outlet would do well. Um, even my retail outlet that was re relatively successful um, I have no interest in continuing that retail space because why would I? Why would I sign a lease and not be able to use the premise, right? The whole point of signing a lease is I believe that I believe that there will be walk-in customers and foot traffic and that's kind of like an advertising billboard. It's the same with billboards. If if no one is driving, why buy a billboard, right? Like what would be the point? Uh, one of my clients is considering buying uh, advertising on a billboard 
And I think that's very silly because no one is driving, so or less people are driving. So this was a game store that I used to play at. It was right next to the Lowe's uh, and then the storage warehouse. The parking was pretty weird. And it was managed poorly. Uh, the magic side was incredibly poorly managed. And why it went belly under was due to poor management. A lot of people open game stores and they don't have any type of business or entrepreneur background. So game stores in general are very low margin. So it's a tough business. So if you were to create any startup, like let's say you create a marketing startup where your overhead isn't that crazy, especially if you work from your home or something like that. Because outside of software, I can't really, maybe some employees, I can't really imagine what your overhead would be. But when you own a game store, you have cost of goods. And that's the merchandise, right? So when the merchandise sells for $90 a box, but it costs you $78 to buy, you might be sitting on a bunch of boxes that you cannot sell. And that sucks. And in terms of online, everyone says, oh, just go online. No, you can't go online. The, the distributors and Wizard of the Coast is online selling. Your competition is Wizard of the, of the Coast. And that's why Amazon, you know, people say, oh, Amazon's $94. That's not bad. Well, Amazon takes 20% of that. So if you, no vendor can sell a box for lower than Wizard of the Coast can, uh, a new standard release box because of the Amazon fee, which is 20% plus maybe another 10% on shipping and storage. So 20% is just off the top. Then you have another five to 10% depending on the volume you do on shipping and storage. And that's why people don't sell on Amazon minus Wizard of the Coast because it's illogical to do so. So when you have a local game store and your local game store is not run as a business, it's run as kind of like, oh, a cool place for me and my friends to hang out. You have no chance of survival. It's just not gonna work. And even in good days, you probably are not doing well. So imagine a recession or a pandemic. You would be so screwed. And that's what people are right now. People are incredibly screwed. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you because I don't think you know, sugarcoating it for game stores is going to help them. If you can get out of your retail space, now's the time to get out of your retail space. Um, secret layers with uh, various... It's not even the secret layer so much. It's just the fact that you have no ability, you have too much overhead to compete online. And... I always tell you the Dungeons & Dragons story where Wizard of the Coast is selling Dungeons & Dragons books for 25 Your distributor wants 27 28 It actually would be cheaper for you to buy it from Amazon from Wizards of the Coast. And I can see this trend applying for Magic. That's what secret layers are, right? The owner of the store buys 10 secret layers direct from Wizard of the Coast and they put it on their store to resell for more money. There's no distributor in the middle. What is the, why do we need a distributor in the middle? It doesn't make any sense. Um, so when, you know, this place used to handle 200 person turnouts for a pre-release. Um, this was a very successful Magic the Gathering. And the rent, I don't think was very expensive given the location. It was also the place that never had air conditioning. It was like 110 degrees. But that's another issue that I can discuss later. In terms of why I think most stores are, and even retail, so even my store, we, we broke even or made a tiny bit of money. So, I mean, it was good. This pandemic is going to change how people behave and... Uh, one of the things you know about Magic is if the Magic players don't come one week, they might not come the next. It's really easy. So people who are repeat customers, they come every single week to play FNM. They were the same people. Whenever I was playing FNM, it was always the same people. And when you don't see someone for one week, then you know they're probably not coming back ever. And that's the main problem with Magic the Gathering is 
of that consistency, that redundancy is no longer available because no one's able to play magic. So you have a lot of issues with magic stores today. And I mean, I look at the numbers and you know, it's the retail is not the only thing I have to close down. I'm also closing down my event princess event company because there's no events. So it doesn't make sense to continue just to pay out money, right? Hi guys. <laughs>